So it wasn't too long ago, I was in a gym, an old gym in Irvine, and I was watching my son play basketball. And we're a few minutes into the third period, and the point guard on his team has the ball. And he dribbles up the court, and he gets to the baseline, and he sees my son on the left in the wing. Takes the ball, passes him, my son catches, pulls up and shoots, nothing but net. Makes a three-point shot. Immediately after he launches this shot, the referee blows the whistle. So he gets another opportunity for a four-point play. So he goes to the basket, shoots the shot, makes it for four. If you were to watch myself and the group of 15 other parents and fans on our team, we went through the roof. Like, yes, great shot. <laughs> then he makes the free throw, and we were just ecstatic. Now, it would be really funny if you would have looked at our faces versus my 10 to 15 friends on the other team. <laughs> they, looked, they looked at the referee, and they said, what are you thinking? How could you make that call? Are we watching the same game? Mm -hmm. So we had a little laugh about that. A few minutes down in the game, their team has the ball, and they have a possession. And they grab the ball, and they're dribbling up the court. And their point guard gets to the rim, he goes up, and he lays the ball in. But actually, right behind it, our team comes behind, slaps the ball, nothing but ball, clear as day, and the ball goes to the ground, he actually misses the shot. So the other team goes, yes, as that whistle goes off from the referee calling a foul. And they're ecstatic about how he would finally make a call right for their team. He goes to the free throw line, shoots two shots, make a mo, both, they go crazy. Fellow Toastmasters, have you ever wondered how two people sitting within two feet of each other in the same place at the same time with similar backgrounds and demographics can see the world so differently? And the fact that they see things so differently, does that mean that they are truly different? So I had this moment, I had this epiphany, and I get on a plane, I travel for a business trip to Wisconsin. And I'm on my plane, so I decided to do some research on other teams that may have similar things going on. I want to understand, is this truly what's happening on a bigger scale? Or is this just me individually having this perception and understanding at this time? So I researched the Major League Baseball, the NFL, the NBA, all these major national teams. And I want to see how I can figure out if there's conflict like this happening in other ways in other big areas. So I found some stats actually on the NFL. And if you look at every game throughout the season, there's actually 6.4 arrests per game times 30 teams, times 16 games per year, that's over 3,000 arrests per game. And this doesn't account for the hundreds and hundreds of other ones that happen that don't even go noticed. If you dive into the details and you find the research, most of these interactions happen because people are arguing about what's going on in the game. Was that pass interference? Was it offsides? Is my team better than your team? And they argue back and forth on the same thing throughout the game and they get into altercations. And it's really interesting because they're in the same place, at the same time, watching the same game, but again, see the world so very differently. A story I came across that was really interesting and actually kind of uh, hit me after I saw these stats was, there were two boys at a game in Oakland about a year ago, a 16-year-old and a 17-year-old boy, and they're watching the game. And of course, they're big Oakland fans. So they're cheering for their team, and they're saying, yes, let's go, you know, great job, let's keep going. A few feet to the left, there's another group of individuals who are cheering for, the, cheering for the other team. And they go back and forth through the game, and they banter, and they yell, and they scream, and things get really, really heated, actually, throughout this game. So they go, and they, and they fight this whole game, but things eventually cool off, and they go their separate ways. So the 16- and 17-year-old boy walk to their car, which is four blocks away. They get three blocks away, before unbeknownst to them, their friends find them with weapons and beat them for the next 12 minutes straight. They had lacerations so deep on their faces, they were unrecognizable. They both needed reconstructive surgery to their chin and their cheekbone, and it took them months to overcome these injuries. One of the boys was beaten so badly in his arm where he could never use it again. Simply because we're in this game, and these people had these altercations and seeing the world differently in the same place at the same time, and it got to this level, which was pretty incredible. So once I got off the plane, um, I was on my way back, uh, you know, finishing my research, and I got in my car at 5.45 in Los Angeles, and I had a long drive back to Orange County, and who's ever driven on the freeway at 5.45 in Los Angeles? <laughs> it's pretty bad, right? So I've been on the road for four days, and I get in my car, and I grip my steering wheel, and I can feel the tension from the long week that I've had, and all I want to do is get home to my wife and kids. It's Thursday. It's been a long week. I just want to get back as soon as I can. So I get in the car, and I punch my GPS, 
and it shows two hours and 43 minutes to get home. And I'm like, oh, unbelievable. You, you gotta be kidding me. So I get in the car, I grip my steering wheel, I'm already frustrated. I get on the freeway, and about two miles uh, into the road, or uh, getting out of the freeway, I merge in to traffic. I have gotta do a quick merge because there's tons of cars on the freeway. I drive another two miles, and a car merges into the freeway and pulls in and cuts me off. Slams his brakes and startles the heck out of me. And I'm just already frustrated and tense and aggravated, and I just lose my mind. And I say more curse words than I can count. I beat my steering wheel to the fact where I can't believe it even still works. And the car speeds up, goes off the freeway, and goes about his day. For the next 15 minutes, I could not get this out of my head. And I was just so mad that somebody could be this thoughtless and do this to me while I was just trying to get home to be with my family. It took me a few days to realize that two miles before then, I also had to merge onto the freeway. There's thousands of cars, and if you don't make a move, you're going into a median. This epiphany happened, and I realized that this person did the same thing that I did. Because there's thousands of cars on the freeway, same place, same time, similar situation. So I'd ask you, when you look at these three situations, are we different? Because when you look at each one individually, it seems like we are. Whether it's two teams going against each other in boys basketball, arguing about the result of a ref making a call, or two, t uh, two kids going back and forth on the score of a professional game, or me freaking out about somebody driving next to me doing exactly the same thing that I am. And the more I've thought about this, the more I've realized that we act different because we see things through a different lens, or we're on different teams, or we're on different sides of the fence. But ultimately, we are the same people doing the same thing in the same situations. And if that's truly the case, shouldn't we act like it and give each other grace and respect and believe the best intent? And if we truly did that, what would it mean for our lives and the lives of others? So I'll leave you with just one challenge. If you are driving on the 405 at 545, please give others grace. There's no need to yell and scream and act the same way that I did. And if you happen to see me driving down the 405, ripping and yelling and screaming, honk your horn, look at me, do one of these, and remind me that we are all in the same place at the same time, doing similar things, and we truly should act like it. Thank you.